Okay, this is the last in the How to Win a Chess Game series. Well, this current series anyway. So keeping things simple, direct, and just remove pieces from the board strategically. All part of the mantra. Smaller pieces attacking higher pieces, lower value pieces attacking higher value pieces. And capturing pieces where it seems, seems seems appropriate. We're going to be doubling the pawns here. Sometimes it's a, ne a negative, sometimes it's a positive, but it's disrupting their pawn structure. So we would take it as a positive in this instance. King safety is key. So just bringing the bishop out now, attacking the weak pawn, baiting the pawn down, also giving space for castling. Okay, so now they're looking to attack this weak pawn here through an x-ray so we have to be mindful of what the opponent can do to us so what we want to do is get this dark square bishop out first so that we can get the knight out to protect the pawn because this pawn will be pushing the queen is out it's putting two on one onto this pawn so if we put a smaller piece defending this pawn then when they push the pawn the bishop isn't going to be taken because a smaller piece is going to take it back so we can prepare that or we can bring the knight up first to defend because the queen is the only one attacking at the moment. Okay, so they're delaying those that aspects. We can go on castle as well, but very mindful that their focal point is on attacking this pawn and we want to be ready to push here. So they've changed the tra trajectory of the queen, still attacking the pawn, but it's now in front of our king area. A smaller piece can attack this um, queen to get it out of the way, but we have to be mindful if we do push, he can drop here and just sit a little bit cosily. Does he have pieces that are aiming towards there? Yes, the bishop, but it does have a pawn in front. We do have a pawn here, and that could be creating a two-on-one situation um, for this particular pawn. But if the queen is down, it's not really doing that. So this knight will be looking to attack and put a two on one on this pawn as well. With the queen doing that move, they've actually unprotected this pawn. So do we have time, do you think, to actually take this pawn? They're going to push because they want a two on one. We can push this pawn to defend. So let's take this pawn because it's unprotected. And see if they're going to follow that line. This pawn won't have any protection, but they're probably looking at a plan of, okay, yeah, looking at the plan of the knight coming here or to here to actually put pressure on the queen. So we could continue with this move, but the idea is that the queen comes here, the knight drops here, the queen's not necessarily going to take the knight because the queen is protecting. So we have to be mindful of that type of position. So what can we do to um, really circumvent that? The knight could come here. But if we go there, he's already got a two on one. The queen can take the pawn for free. So what is the key move out of all of this? The key move is really the smaller piece attacking the higher piece. The queen has to move. So we can bring the queen here. But like we said, the knight is going to drop in here. So what do we really want to do? Maybe the bishop comes here if the knight does drop here, but then he's still going to get the check on the king. Let's look at this. We might be overcomplicating the whole thing. We have a free pawn here, but they have sights of taking this pawn. We could do the simple thing, or we could do the simple thing of bringing the queen here. I'm actually going to bring the queen here, because then... If anything happens, the knight can still come here, like we said, uh, but they're not taking that track just yet. So the bishop can actually put a check on the king and make its way down into this area. Queen could also put a check on. They've asked for a take back. And we've had plenty of time to go through the moves. And if I'm treating this like a proper game, I wouldn't ask, I wouldn't take a take back. Um, but I'm going to take on this occasion because we'll see what they want to do. Also, they've just moved a little bit further down, attacking the pawn. So they've got a 2 on one So the queen can go and put a check on the king, or the bishop can. I think making the bishop a little bit more lively, just putting the check here, and potentially stopping the queen from coming here when our smaller piece attacks it. 
So let's have a look at how many pieces they've got attack attacking this pawn. They've got one, two, and three. So if we went and attacked, the queen is probably going to take the pawn. So we can take the knight, take the pawn. Let's do that anyway. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece. If they forget themselves and go here, we have the stealth bishop. So really looking at, oh, the pawn takes. Okay, so the knight can take, and then their knight takes back. Or we can just leave it because we were a pawn up anyway. And we don't need to do anything. There's no urgent need to take the pawn. That's the thing. But the knight is actually on, the, sorry, the rook is actually on the knight. It's unprotected. So if we did take, then we would lose the knight. So we could just move the knight out of the way to attack an unprotected bishop. But the pawn is actually on the bishop, on the, on the um, sorry, on the queen. So are we having to bring the queen back to protect the knight? So that was a different kind of move order that they put in place here. We've got plenty of time, five minutes. The whole idea really is about looking at blocking off what the opponent is attempting to do as best possible. I think simply bringing the queen back, protecting the knight is going to work because we will be down a piece if we took the pawn. The knight takes back, the queen can't take back. But their queen is actually on this, um, our pawn is on their queen. So let's have a look at that situation. If we take, and then we get a pawn. So we're back up a pawn, looking at the move order of things. So taking that important time factor to really look at, well, what, what can we actually do? As you saw there, um, we had many, many calculations that we could go through. The knight doesn't have any protection on, so it's attacking the knight with the bishop. Our bishop can take this pawn because it's got no protection. The knight can jump here, but then they've got like loads of pieces on here. This bishop is protected. So we could come here looking for a fork here on the rooks. So I'm going to move the knight out of the way looking for this square here. They may forget themselves because this pawn is under... Um, it's not protected. So the art of calculation, calculating and looking at what potentially can happen. You're not going to get 100% proof. It's just landed on our bishop. And it's asked for a take back, but I'm not doing any more take backs now because they'll just take back until they actually get a winning position or something. And they've resigned. So that's the whole idea behind how to win a chess game. It's really looking at simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically and by the word strategically we just mean basically looking at is your position going to be favorable when you make your move is the opponent getting more strength do we need to block off their attempts at um attacking us um is our is our king safe and looking definitely at the move order of things in this game it was crucial the move order in terms of the kick queen captures and then still maintaining an advantageous plus pawn in the game.